Welcome everyone, Costine here on Serious Gaming with my Protection Paladin Tank Guide for World of Warcraft The Burning Crusade Classic. Here I want to talk about gearing up for pre-raid best in slot and for tier 4. What should you aim for? What are you looking at? Now the reason I'm doing this is because there is a perception about uh, the Paladin tanks overall that exists among people who have played Burning Crusade or are going to play Burning Crusade that they are weak, that their survival is not great, that they're only good basically to tank AoE packs, to tank trash. Now, the perception is false, but there is a reason it exists. That's because Protection Paladins are the most gear dependent of the tanks between Protection Warriors, Feral Druids, and Protection Paladins. Paladins are the ones with the roughest start. They need a lot of gear. They're the most gear dependent. They scale very well with gear, which makes up for any inherent weaknesses, but they do need to make the right decisions. And many people don't. I'm not saying that it's easy to gear up a Protection Paladin. In fact, gearing up a Protection Paladin at the start of Burning Crusade can be quite a nightmare. But if you do it correctly, you can be a powerhouse tank. If you do it wrongly, you will be very weak. So making the right decisions in terms of your gearing is very, very important. And this is where you run into the issue that many of the gear lists, many of the guides that exist out there are not quite right on the money. And this is what I personally aim to rectify. I've, I've played the Protection Paladins since retail Burn Crusade, uh, from beginning to end of the Burn Crusade. I've tanked pretty much every boss on retail Burn Crusade until Moru. And more recently, I was playing on the Netherring server, extremely buffed Burning Crusade server compared to retail. There are four priorities when it comes to your gearing as a Protection Paladin. The first one, most important, is to get 490 defense to be immune from critical blows by bosses, by mobs in general. This requires about 285 defense rating. Very important to get and not too difficult. The second, and this is one that's actually difficult, is to become uncrushable. What does that mean? Well, bosses have crushing blows in the burning crusade many of them and they will do a lot of extra damage this is actually an issue druids have because although they have a lot of armor they have a lot of hp they can't get immune uh, to crushing blows so they'll end up taking a significant amount of damage now paladins are in this position where they can get uncrushable but they require a lot of gear to do it and they require the correct gear choices to do it for warriors Shield block gives you a significant amount of block chance, so it's not really an issue for warriors. And by the way, this is not just for tanking bosses. Being crush cap, getting 102.4% combination of miss, dodge, parry, and block is obviously most useful on bosses, but it also does matter for trash, for adds, for five man heroics. Why is that? Well, because being able to either miss, dodge, parry, or block every blow that's coming your way will significantly reduce the damage you're taking in general, not just on bosses, but on trash, in five minutes, it doesn't matter where it is. M most of the time, you'll just need 100%. For raid bosses, you'll need 102.4%, and it is advisable to get it if you're, seri uh, if you're serious about playing as a Protection Paladin. After that, you focus on stamina and armor for survivability, and you focus on spell damage for your friend. This is a great thing about Protection Paladins. They only care about one stat for improving their fret, and that's literally spell damage, or really, holy spell damage, if you want to be very specific about it. And unlike warriors and druids who have to care about a variety of stats, this is one of the strengths of the uh, Protection Paladin, and also the fact that they're basically a caster when you're looking at it from uh, from a fret perspective. Now, it, people can say, oh, they m have mana issues. Yeah, mana potions exist. Imagine using consumables in World of Warcraft. I'm sure we haven't been doing that since vanilla World of Warcraft. Oh, wait, we have. Anyway, these are your priorities and in that order. Important to say something here is that when you're looking at, uh, at these uh, gear priorities, that you want to get the minimum minimum required for defense. So just 490, just 285 if you can. Generally, you'll be higher here. Just over the crush cap to become uncrushable and then stack as much stamina, as much armor, as much spell damage as you can. That should be your goal. Get the minimum required, but then move on to the next step and stack stamina, stack armor, stack spell damage. 
Finally, when it comes to your gearing, you should prioritize initially getting your defensive enchants, getting a reputation enchants, the helm enchant from Keepers of Time, uh, getting Alders or Scryers exalted. Prioritize that over stamina or spell damage. It's more important to be crit cap, to be uncrushable, than it is to get a spell damage enchant or a stamina enchant. So prioritize those initially, especially if you're struggling with cash, and then focus on stamina, then focus on spell damage. With regards to figuring out how much avoidance and block chance you need in order to get crush cap, you can calculate that on your own. You can use a macro, there are several available, or you can use an add-on. Now, I personally have LVI for my Uniframes action bars, and it does have an avoidance breakdown. Problem is, this doesn't properly show your miss chance, so it's not as useful as it could be. What you want to use as a protection paladin is something called Tankadin. On the upper left side, it has a Righteous Fury button, which is red if you don't have Dawn. Press it, activates Righteous Fury. Lower left side, it will show you, most importantly, when Ardent Defender becomes useful. So in my case, when I get to below 6.1k HP, Ardent Defender starts being used, reducing damage. And obviously, this goes higher and higher the more HP you have. On the right side, you have your avoidance, your block chance, and how far away you are from being crush capped. In my case, I have 11.7 miss chance, 25% dodge chance, 18% parry for a total of close to 55% uh, avoidance. I have a block chance of 26.8. And overall, I am close to 21% away from being crush capped passively. No abilities used, no buffs used. So passively unbuffed with no abilities, I am 21% away from having crush immunity. Now with Holy Shield and specifically Holy Shield with Liberum of Repentance, which gives you 42 block rating, with Holy Shield activated, that gives you 35% block chance, which means that I'm over the crush cap with this gear by 14.4. Now, of course, this is tier six gear, so it's going to look a lot different when you start gearing your Paladin. If I remove all of the gear over here, go with the birthday suit, just keeping a spell damage shield and the Liberum just to demonstrate Holy Shield, but with no gear, with no stats on your gear, you're 75.4% away from crush cap by default. Now, this is with protection Paladin talent. So you have defense, you have extra parry than you would otherwise. But importantly, 75.4%. It can be higher or lower depending on your race, depending on your base agility, which does vary depending on the race you've chosen. But anyway, 75.4% by default. If you use Holy Shield with the Libram, it's 40%. And in actuality, it's even lower than that 40% because you will need 490 defense, 285 defense rating, which will grant you about 4.8% chance to miss attack. So your miss chance will go from 5.8 to 10.6%. So 4.8% from, uh, from all the defense you're going to have to get anyway. So that really means that you need 35.2 or 3%. So I'd say 35.3% just to be on the safe side a bit. That's what you need to aim for. Now, how do you get that? Well, for that, I'm going to have to bring up another add-on, just moving Tankadin over here and bring up another add-on called WoW Equip. This can help you sort out your gear, your raid gear, your pre-raid gear, whatever it is. It shows, you, it shows me right now all the items I have equipped, but I've set up some profiles. You, can, you click on an item slot and you find whatever item you want. So if, say for a helmet, let's say I want the tier four helmet. I just uh, type in just the car, face car, it will show it up. You need to have this in your cache uh, to be able to get the item though. But anyway, I load this up and this is how a protection paladin should look like if they're striving for survivability in pre-raid gear. Now, some of these pieces aren't the very best pieces you can get pre-raid, but all of these pieces are reasonable enough to acquire once you've gotten to level 70. And this gear has a good amount of survivability and does have crush cap. And specifically, you have 15.4 chance to block, 14.26 chance to dodge, 5.6 uh, chance to parry, and overall 
with the extra miss chance you will have you'll be just above the 35.2 uh, percent i believe it's 35.29 percent if you add it all exactly without any raid buff so your crush cap you have about 11 uh, k armor with this gear and 687 stamina your hp with this gear would be about 12.5 k unbuffed and you do scale very well with raid buffs just keep that in mind you scale probably the best with raid buffs um, though obviously druids get a lot of hp obviously from bear form but anyway when it comes to individual gear pieces for the helmet the fell steel helmet for the gloves fell steel gloves these are very cheap easy enough to acquire I've put uh, stamina gems in all the gem slots. They're really easy to acquire because every every blacksmith will be making fell steel pieces to lever, uh, level their profession up. So there will be plenty of helmets, gloves, and even pants on the auction house. Now, I don't recommend the pants, but the gloves and the helmet are some of the best pieces pre-raid for survivability. I've put uh, keepers of time, defense rating, and dodge rating in chant on the helmet. You need revered for that and free 12 stamina uh, gems for a helmet for the gloves 20 spell damage as i've said you don't necessarily need to rush for fret or stamina but you do want to rush for anything that increases your defense or dodge in terms of enchants or in terms of gear that's that should be your priority so anyway uh alternatives to these if you want more fret uh, but don't want to lose too much in terms of your defense rating, because that's the thing that really matters the most, are the Helm of the Righteous and the Gauntlets of the Righteous. For the two set uh, bonus, which will help you out in terms of uh, your consecration, in terms of your mana, which does become an issue, especially for five man dungeons and even for Karazhan, can become an issue if you're playing with full survivability gear. So you can use those if you want more fret, if you want to have uh, fewer mana issues. And you don't lose too much defense by doing so. You don't lose too much survivability. And they're the best pieces to get if you want to uh, still maintain uh, your crush cap and also get a fret boost. Anyway, for neck, Strength of the Untamed from Scenarian Expedition Revered. This is the best option in terms of stamina, defense, and dodge. Just a combination of those three stats. There are some with higher defense or higher stamina, but... This is the best neck when it comes to overall statistics as far as I see it. Belt, Girdle of the Immovable from Slave Pen's uh, Heroic. An alternative, if you don't want to do Slave Pen's Heroic or if you're just getting started, an alternative is the belt from the Architraz Key Quest from the final part, which requires you to clear out Mechanar Normal and Botanica Normal. Uh, the Shatari Vindicator Waste Guard. It has more defense, it has more block rating, it does have block value, but it doesn't have the two stamina, uh, uh, the two gem slots, which, which you should use to put in stamina gems in. So you are sacrificing gem slots for higher defense, higher block rating and block value, uh, which can be worth it initially as you're gearing up. Those two options for a belt. For shoulders, fan blade pauldrons. And nothing really comes close to these uh, shoulders. No other uh, shoulder pieces anywhere as good as uh, as these. They give you defense, 20 defense rating, and 15 parry rating. Now, parry is not a great stat, but you really don't have any other option. You get these from Akenai Crypt's Heroic from the first boss. Now, Ak Akenai Crypt's Heroic is one of the easiest and fastest to do dungeon in the entirety of the Burning Crusade. It doesn't require a lot of effort. If you don't have Exalted Aldor or Scryers, which is what I have here, I have the Exalted Scryers enchant for 15 defense, 10 dodge. If you don't have that, uh, you can always use one gem to make up for that difference until you get it. And you should focus on getting it as quickly as, uh, as possible. It does make uh, a difference. But anyway, shoulders, fan uh, pauldrons, and no, really, uh, no other alternative. Maybe the dungeon set, if you just care about fret, and maybe you know, you're know you unlucky with the gauntlets and all that. But your goal should be to get the fan blade pauldrons. Pants, Time Warden's Leggings, from Keepers of Time Revered. Free gem slots, 40 stamina, 12 agility, uh, 11, uh, en enchant, uh, 11 dodge rating, 18 defense rating, really good pants, can't be replaced. Cloak, Devil Shark Cape from the final boss of uh, Steam Vault's normal, defense rating, 
a dodge rating, block value, 22 stamina. Now your cloak enchant will vary depending on what's available. If you have the dodge rating cloak enchant available on your server, which it may not be uh, because it's an AQ enchant, it becomes available with patch 2.2, so it may not be available initially, but you, if you have that, get that, it will help you. If you don't have that, put agility. If you don't want to put agility, put armor. Just understand that you'll have to make up for uh, the loss of dodge rating or agility uh, somewhere else. My recommendation is try and get dodge rating. If you can't get that, get uh, any kind of agility enchant on, on your cloak. And in the worst case scenario, get armor. Boots. And this is a quest item from Mana Tombs Normal, an escort quest, Flesh Beasts, Metal Greaves. So do that escort quest, doesn't matter when you do it, you can do it at 70, doesn't matter, get these boots. Best in slot, pre-raid. They don't have as much stamina, they don't have gem slots, but the ridiculous amount of defense and dodge makes them the best in slot boots in-game pre-raid. You'll replace them in Karazhan, uh, and it, it might take a while to actually replace them just because they have so much avoidance and you will need that. Chest, Jade Skull, Breastplate. 25 defense, 23 block rating, 50 stamina. Second boss of Mechanar normal. Not really hard to, to do. Highly recommended that you get this particular chest piece just because of the block rating, the high stamina, the high defense. Ring. And this is where a lot of people can screw up. Andormus tier. This is a quest reward. It doesn't have stamina. It does, however, have a ridiculous amount of avoidance. 10 defense rating, not too great but 26 dodge rating and 15 shield block rating makes it one of the best rings in game pre-raid by far and away you become a proper raid tank when you can get crush cap without needing this gear and without sacrificing elsewhere for the sake of avoidance and block rating until you get to that point however having this is very damn useful uh, 12 spell damage on ring from enchanting that's very useful to get to get enchanting just for the spell damage uh, enchant for both rings. Uh, for the chest, since I forgot to mention it, 150 HP. Very useful to have that. The second ring, Elementium Band of the Sentry. This is from Arcatraz Normal. Final boss, defense and dodge. 20 defense, 19 dodge. Very useful ring with a good amount of stamina. Trinket. First trinket. Fingering of the Colossus from Shattered Holds Normal from Cargo. Cargo of Blade Fist, the final boss. The same boss, by the way, uh, that drops the Gauntlets of the Righteous. Uh, anyway, 32 shield block rating. Now, this is more so a farming trinket, but you can use it initially to help you out in terms of being able to get enough block and, and have enough avoidance and block rating to get Crush Cap. So, it's a very, very useful trinket. Like with Andormus tier, you become a proper raid tank when you can replace it. So replacing these two, when you can replace these two and still maintain crush camp and still maintain a very high level of survivability, that's when you become a proper raid tank. Tr second trinket, Goblin Rocket Launcher, 45 stamina. Now this can be a bit expensive and a bit annoying to get early on. It's about 1k gold, 1.6k gold, depends on the prices on your server, so it can be a bit uh, expensive. Alternatives are the compass from Underbog Heroic from the final boss, as well as if you just uh, can't be arsed doing Underbog Heroic but you want the second trinket. Another alternative is the Andamantite figurine from Shadow Labyrinth Normal from the second boss. Can be useful, but that's more so a stopgap. Eventually, you do want to get stamina trinkets two stamina trinkets, two goblin rocket launchers. You can also, there's also an alternative if you're a gnome mission engineer, but yeah, this is, uh, this is a very powerful trinket and getting two of these should be your long-term goal. Uh, bracers, and there is really no uh, alternative here. Bracers of the Green Fortress. Crafted, not too ridiculously expensive, but very damn good. And dodge rating by 10. Defense rating by 17, good amount of stamina. You can probably use this all the way to tier 6. Or until Void Reaver in uh, Tempest Keep. Depends on whether or not Void Reaver has uh, the avoidance bracers uh, that he starts dropping with 2.1. If he has them, that's when you'd replace them. If he doesn't, you'll probably replace them in, uh, in tier 6. So yeah, very powerful bracers. Not too ridiculously expensive, highly recommended. Weapon, Continuum Blade. Keepers of Time, Revered. Yeah, 
you need Keepers of Time Revered. There's no way around it. You get weapon, you get pants, you get helmet chant. Very useful faction to get uh, revered with ASAP. Continuum Blade is probably the most balanced weapon outside of like an arena weapon or some raid weapon. It's probably the, the most balanced uh, tanking weapon pre-raid. 121 damage in healing, 30 stamina. It's very good for survivability. There are some other options if you care purely about fret and you're fine sacrificing some survivability in some cases. If your horde, uh, Stormcaller is probably your best fret option, but that requires Fralmar Exalted. If you're alliance and you have Seal of Vengeance, uh, you can use the Gavel of Unearthed Secrets, which requires Lower City Exalted. But that's only useful for Alliance if they have uh, with Seal of Vengeance. Uh, with Seal of Righteousness, you generally want to use a faster weapon, and that's where Continuum Blade or Stormcaller or even Honor Call is better if you're using Seal of Righteousness. For Shield, a Platinum Shield of the Valorous, 24 Defense, Furry Free Stamina, 3.7 Armor. Now, this is a reasonable option. It's from the first boss of Shadow Labyrinth Normal. Uh, better options are the Zur Shield of Koldara. That's a bad shield, 33 badges of justice. It's just basically a better version of this, this particular shield. So get that eventually. Start with this, get that, and that's when you're set. And finally, Librum, Librum of Repentance. You're probably going to be using it for most of the game. For 42 block rating while Holy Shield is active. And that's what you should aim for. Nothing on this list is ridiculously hard to get. Nothing is too obnoxious to get. Maybe one or two drops, uh, the belt or the shoulders because they're from Heroic. But everything else is fairly reasonable. Everything else that I have mentioned. And you will have 687 stamina, 11 key armor, and you will have crush cap. Your real problem with this can be fret. You have only 205 spell damage over here. You can make up for that by using the helmet of the righteous and the gauntlets of the righteous uh, as an alternative to fell steel. They will help you out with uh, your mana cost on consecration, which can be and is a big deal actually for protection paladins without losing too much. Now for tier 4 best in slot, this is how a protection paladin should look like with maximized survival in tier 4 gear. This is what you should personally aim for. Now I'm not going to lie about this, some of these pieces of gear can be a nightmare to acquire. You can be doing Karazhan for months without seeing any of them. I've certainly been in that position. It certainly can take quite a bit of time, but for the most part these pieces of gear are just natural upgrades to the pieces of gear you're using with your pre-raid bis, for the most part. And so you don't really have to concern, oh, I'm losing this stat and I'm getting that other stat. What do I need to make up for that? For the most part, it's general upgrades. You just get more armor, more survivability, more avoidance, more defense rating in many cases. Not all of them, but that's the general rule of thumb. If there is an item on this list where you want to put your foot down and argue you should get it over a protection warrior, for instance, it's these iron gauntlets of the maiden. These gloves are best in slot until the tier 6 gloves. You will not replace them until Mount Hygel. It, they're that powerful for the purposes of survival. And that's because that 17 shield block rating is very damn useful, as are the two gem slots and of course the defense rating and block value, but it's really the shield block rating and the uh, the sockets that make it useful. You can use the tier 5 gloves, but they're less uh, powerful for survivability, and you mainly use the tier 5 gloves for the sake of fret if you get them, if and when uh, you get them. Until that point, you're going to use these, and you're going to use these for any situation where you're struggling to survive over anything else. So very powerful gloves, you should get them as quickly as you can. Helmet! Tier 4, just a car, face guard. I've put an enduring talisite for the socket bonus of 4 dodge rating because you're still at the point, even with all this gear, where you care about the crush cap. You haven't gotten to a point where you don't have to care about it. Actually, this is the point where you're sacrificing a lot of avoidance, a lot of block rating to try and maximize your stamina, your armor, your overall survivability. And that, those are the kind of sacrifices you make. But hey, sacrificing 6 stamina for 4 dodge rating, I'd say that's worth it for the most part. Uh, neck, Barb Choker of Discipline, 39 stamina, 
21 dodge, 16 defense rating. Now, all the stats on this gear is obviously post 2.1. Pre 2.1, they will be weaker, but still very much worth getting for the most part. There is one exception I'll get to into. Belt, Crimson Girdle of the Indomitable. This drops from a Morose. Very good belt, an improved version of what you're using. Two, two gem sockets, 24 defense, 20 shield block rating. Really good, 36 stamina. Shoulders, Justicar, Shoulder Guards. Again, using the socket bonus in this case for some extra stamina, it's really good. Uh, 15 defense rating, 17 shield block rating, uh, increased damage and healing, and increased life value. You're basically trading uh, the parry chance of your previous shoulders for shield block rating, which is worth doing considering other pieces of gear. Very good to have these shoulders. If there are two tier pieces you want to get as quickly as possible, it's the helmet and the shoulders, and eventually uh, the chest. Uh, Pants, Rin Dynasty, Greaves, this, these drop from Curator. Free gem sockets, increased defense and increased uh, dodge compared to the Time Warden's leggings. They do have less stamina, but they do have higher armor. They do have higher avoidance. So they're very useful for you. I'd say they're the second best item when it comes to like offset pieces uh, besides the Iron Gauntlets of the main. And so you should get these uh, quickly. You can sacrifice on the belt, you can sacrifice on the boots, but you really want to get the gauntlets and the pants as quickly as possible. Speaking of boots, uh, boots of Illusion, trash drops from Karazhan can be annoying depending on your luck. I've done, personally done Karazhan for quite a while without seeing m many of these, maybe one or two in months of Karazhan. So they can be fairly rare. You, you're you likely going to have a higher success with the boots from chess, but you're going to have to make some compromises with those. These are, however, ideal. High defense, high dodge, just an improved version of the Fell Beast uh, ones. Ring-wise, Violet Signet of the Great Protector, close to 400 armor, 37 stamina, enchanted with 12 spell damage, 19 defense rating. Chest-wise, Justicar, chest card. Now, only if it's post 2.1 itemization. If it's pre 2.1, you want the Panzer fan that drops from Nightbane because the Justicar chest card pre 2.1 doesn't have shield block rating. If it's post 2.1, this is best in slot until tier 6. And the reason is, it's just a better version of the Skull, uh, Jade Skull Breastplate with free uh, sockets for gems and with damage and healing done. You want to get this, uh, and you're going to use this until tier 6. Same with the helmet, by the way. Going to use that until tier 6. Second ring, Elementium Band of Sentry. Same stuff, uh, Architraz Normal, Final Boss. Trinkets, two Goblin Rocket Launchers. A lot of stamina, over 1k stamina from the trinkets alone. Ridiculous. When you're accounting for talents, kings, all that kind of stuff, over 1k stamina from the trinkets alone. Very powerful. If you want extra fret, you can replace one of these trinkets with the icon of Silver Crescent, which you get from badges. But for pure survivability, you want to use two of these gob goblin rocket launchers. You can also get the fl epic flying mount and get exalted with Netherwing when that becomes available and get that trinket if you want to replace them. But really, for the most part, you want to use these goblin rocket launchers. Very powerful. Bracers, bracers of the Green Fortress, crafted pre ray bis. Same, same deal as before. Shield, Aldori Legacy Defender. Now, something to be stated here. It's best in slot for both warriors, warriors and paladins. I would say, however, that the first one should go to a warrior. It's very rare. It's also very difficult for a warrior to replace. You will have an easier time of replacing it than they will. You have a trash shield from a Black Temple that you can use. They don't. So understand that if you get one of these, and they're rare, they can be very rare. You can, it can take you months to just get one or two of these. So the first one should go for warrior, you should take the second one. You can use the Nightbane shield, the bat shield, all of that kind of stuff. Eventually you want to get this, however. Um, high def defense, 19 defense uh, rating with the gem uh, socket for two extra defense rating. That's a blue gem, by the way. 15 hit. It's really the hit that makes it uh, better for warriors than for you. It's just that extra fret that they gain. So don't be a prick. Tanking is a team effort. Always understand that. Always respect that. And just don't be a complete asshole towards other uh, towards other tanks in your guild. Libram. Libram of Repentance. 42 block rating while Holy Shield is active. And then finally, Weapon. Gladiator's Gavel. Now, if this is available on your server, get it as quickly as you can. It's the best in slot tanking weapon for 
tier 4 for the most part. There is one exception, there is a better weapon available, and that weapon is called Fang of the Leviathan. But that's where you get into a lot of issues. I'd say personally, if Gladiator's Gavel is available, you probably don't care too much about Fang of the Leviathan unless your guild is getting a large number of them, because it will benefit your casters more than you getting it. You should be on a lower priority if that's the case. If Gavel is available, get uh, be on a lower priority. If Gavel isn't available, or it's very difficult to acquire, like say it takes over what 2k arena rating to get it, then in that situation, you should argue that you should get Fang of the Leviathan first, because it's going to be a significant upgrade for you as a protection paladin, far more so than anyone else, in the situation where Gavel isn't available. Because when Gavel isn't available, what are you going to use? You're either going to have to compromise on survivability and use something like Stormcaller, or you're going to have to use Continuum Blade, which has far less in terms of spell damage. So in that situation, if this weapon isn't available, get Fang of the Leviathan. If uh, if it is available, just settle for this. Use this until tier 6. It's a solid enough weapon. Honestly, you can use Continuum Blade until tier 6. I've personally done it. You will, however, suffer in terms of your fret generation. With this gear, you will have 860 free stamina, 14k armor, if I scroll all the way uh, down over here, 40, over 14k armor, chance to block close to 15%, chance to dodge 16.2, chance to parry 5.2. So you're, you're over the crush cap with this, uh, just over it, bear, at the limit in, to a certain degree. And you have some room uh, with a ring, for instance, and a trinket to go for more uh, fret if you so desire. Maybe even the neck. Maybe even the neck in certain situations, if you want to really push, push it for that. I mean, if you really want to be extreme, you can start uh, switching pieces left and right for cloth spell damage pieces. If you really care that much about it, you might in some situations. Uh, you have 360 free spell damage with all of the gear that I just mentioned. That's um, 190 free less than what I currently have with my tier 6 mitigation gear enabled. There are situations where you'll want more Fred. There's many situations where you'll focus on survivability, on trash, on ads, on bosses. So this this kind of gear is really useful. You can tank pretty much anything in the game until Sunwell Plateau with this. I'm not saying it would be an easy thing to tank some of the bosses in Black Temple and Mount Hydral, but it can be done. So anyway, Kostin here on Serious Gaming signing out. Thank you all for watching. Stay tuned for more. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and enable notifications. And if you do like my content, please do consider supporting me via PayPal, Patreon, or for YouTube channel membership.